Hi everyone, this is your Unit 5 vocabulary for English 3. The first word on our list is ameliorate, which is a verb. The definition for ameliorate is to make better, less painful, or to improve. So an example sentence for that is my new eyeglasses ameliorated my sight. I can now see much more clearly. This word has a positive connotation since it is talking about making something better. Our second word is ascribe, which is a verb. The definition for ascribe is to assign or refer to as a cause or a source. So like in this picture here, when you point your finger at someone, you are ascribing the blame on them. Number three is axiomatic. Axiomatic is an adjective. The definition for axiomatic is self-evident, universally accepted as true. So something like easy math is something that would be axiomatic. It's just accepted as true. We all know it's correct. So our sample sentence is simple math like addition and subtraction are axiomatic because the same answers will always be true. Number four is contingent, which is an adjective. The definition for contingent is possible and likely, but not certain. It's a conditional thing where it's dependent on uncertain conditions. So you may have heard of something like a contingency plan. When you have a contingency plan, that's a plan B. It's like you've got a backup. So if something is contingent, it is a backup. That's what you're describing is that actual backup thing as contingent. So an example sentence is, when planning for college, it is good to have a contingent choice after your number one school. Number five is dilatory, which is an adjective. The definition for dilatory is causing a delay or tending to be late or slow to do something, which is something that I think a lot of students might think of with procrastinating, like in our comic strip here. Aren't you starting your psych assignment? I'm busy doing this photo for Facebook, so really just putting something off. If you're a person who is a procrastinator, you could be described as dilatory. So the example sentence is, the dilatory student always procrastinated doing their writing portfolio. Don't be one of those people. Make sure you are staying up to par with everything that you need to do for your research paper writing portfolio. So this word really has a negative connotation because it's really not the greatest idea to procrastinate and be a dilatory student. Number six is disparity, which is a noun. The definition for disparity is the condition or fact of being unequal. This could be something that is unequal in age, in rank, or degree, anything that has something unequal or very different from each other. So like in our picture here, there's a sample sentence. There is a great disparity between the number of rich people in the United States and the remaining middle and lower class. And this really has a negative connotation. So when you're thinking of a disparity, it's noticing those differences that are kind of differences in a, in a not so good way. Number seven is dissident, which can be an adjective and a noun. For the adjective definition, this would be describing something that is differing or disagreeing in opinion or attitude. And then if you are going to use the adjective in a sentence, you would say something like, the dissident sides could not agree on a solution for discrimination. So that's dissident, something that is disagreeing and describing the sides, so those sides are disagreeing. For the noun definition of the word, you can say that a person is a dissident. So the definition for the noun form of dissident is a person who disagrees with the majority or with an established organization. Basically, someone who is a dissident is someone who has an unpopular opinion. So our example noun sentence is, when someone has the opinion that Beyonce is not an amazing singer and performer, I consider them a dissident. Number eight is exhort, which is a verb. So the definition for exhort is to try to influence someone by words or advice, to strongly urge someone to do something. So I really thought of like coaches on the sideline, like in our picture there. The example sentence for exhort is the coach exhorted his star quarterback to keep his head in the game. This can really have a positive or a negative connotation. You could be trying to influence someone and giving them advice 
for good or you could be doing so um, in a bad way. So it can really be kind of neutral and be positive or negative connotation depending on how it's used in the sentence. Number nine is expostulate, which is a verb. The definition for expostulate is to attempt to dissuade or deter someone from some course or decision by serious reasoning. So when you are expostulating, you're really trying to convince someone not to do something by giving them really good reasons to not do it. So our sample sentence for expostulate is the older, wiser cat attempted to expostulate the other cat from climbing on the window screens. So the one cat is really like trying to get them to stop doing something. Number 10 is fastidious, which is an adjective. The definition for fastidious is hard to please, very careful, meticulous about how you do something. So this is somebody who's going to be very particular about how something is done. Um, and in a way that kind of just shows that they are very careful. So a sample sentence is the fastidious woman made sure that her closet was extremely organized and carefully put away all of her clothes. So this really has a positive connotation. It's not meant to be a negative thing. It's just kind of simply describing someone who uh, pays attention to detail. Number 11 is imperceptible, which is an adjective. The definition for imperceptible is impossible to see or notice, very slight or gradual. So our example sentence is, it was imperceptible to find the difference between the two drawings for the company's advertisements. So when something is imperceptible, it's hard to perceive a difference. That's the root of perceptible. So if it's imperceptible, then it's hard to see something. Just like in our pictures off to the side and for our sentence, they updated this drawing of the girl for 2013 from 1985, but there are barely any differences. So it's kind of hard to pick them out right away. Number 12 is impetuous, which is an adjective. The definition for impetuous is acting or done quickly and without thought, controlled by emotion rather than thought. So you're not really thinking of reasons and kind of weighing out the pros and cons. You're really just just making a decision and going off of your emotions and your feelings. So a good example sentence for impetuous is, Sierra was an impetuous shopper. She quickly purchased everything she loved in the store instead of thinking about her bank account. So this is really going to have a negative connotation. This is a word that would be describing those people who kind of like uh, make decisions or take action too quickly because of their feelings instead of actually thinking of good reasons why they should act the way that they do. Number 13 is infringe, which is a verb. The definition for infringe is to do something that does not follow or obey a rule or law to violate or to wrongly limit or restrict something. So there's kind of a couple of ways that you can look at this definition. The first part is to do something that doesn't follow the rules. So with our example sentence and picture, it says Matt infringed on the rules by hopping over the fence and ignoring the keep out sign. So that use of infringe is where he's not listening to a rule. But you can also use infringe um, for the part of the definition where it says to wrongly limit or restrict. So if people's rights are restricted, then you could say that their rights are being infringed upon. And so this word really does have a negative connotation because either you're not listening to a rule or um, someone is kind of like doing you wrong by limiting or restricting something. Number 14 is lethargic. The definition for lethargic, which is an adjective, is feeling a lack of energy or a lack of interest in doing things. Like you just don't want to do anything. So you're feeling lethargic if you are in that kind of state of mind. The, def the sample sentence for that is Lulu was so lethargic that she just put her head down on her shelf instead of cleaning her room like her mom asked. So this really has a negative connotation. Most people, even when they are lethargic, might not really want to feel that way. Or you're just so tired and so uninterested that you just are have no energy whatsoever. Number 15 is nebulous, which is an adjective. The definition for nebulous is not clear, difficult to see, understand, or describe. Um, so it can be something kind of cloud-like if your kind of like mind is in the clouds or if something is literally kind of cloud-like, then it would be described as nebulous. So just like our picture, it was such a nebulous morning that I could barely see through the fog 
as I walk to school. This really has a negative connotation because either it's something where it's hard to see or maybe um, you are you have kind of a nebulous state of mind or don't really understand something. So it really has a negative connotation. Number 16 is remonstrate. Remonstrate is a verb, which means to argue with someone against something, to protest against, or to expostulate, which is also a word in our list here. So you want to kind of think about that. Um, I know it is a part of the definition, but to expostulate is when you're really trying to get someone to change their mind by giving them good reasons. And when you are remonstrating, it's just the actual act of arguing. So that's how they're a little bit different. Um, so remonstrate is going to be more of an argument and expostulate is more of a serious conversation. Uh, the example sentence for remonstrate is the soccer player remonstrated with the referee after getting a penalty. So this really has a negative connotation. Number 17 is reprove, which is a verb. The definition for reprove is to find fault with, to scold, or to criticize. So just like in our picture, Shannon reproved the puppy for sitting on the dishwasher door. So she is telling it that it is not doing something right, scolding it, criticizing it, and finding the, the reasons why it's wrong. So this really has a negative connotation. Number 18 is repudiate, which is a verb. Repudiate means to refuse to have anything to do with, to disown, to reject, or to deny the validity of. So you can repudiate a lot of different things. You kind of can repudiate people if you refuse to have anything to do with them. If you repudiate an idea, you kind of reject the idea. You don't like it. You're not a part of it. You don't agree with it. Or you can deny that something is valid. So you can repudiate something as being invalid. You don't agree with it. Again, if there's an idea or a statement, you say it's not a valid statement, then you're repudiating. So for an example sentence, Naya repudiated her boyfriend and refused to have anything to do with him after realizing how much he lied to her. This is definitely something with a negative connotation. Number 19 is sedentary, which is an adjective. The definition for sedentary is involving or requiring a lot of sitting. So very inactive. You're always kind of just sitting down when you're sedentary. So something that is often associated with being sedentary are jobs where you have to sit down a lot. So just like the guy in our picture and our example sentence, it says working in an office is a very sedentary job because you have to sit at a desk for most of your work day. This really is a negative connotation, that kind of inactivity, but there are lots of other jobs that are sedentary as well. Something like a truck driver or a school bus driver is going to have a sedentary job because they are sitting down all the time. Number 19 is transient, which can be an adjective or a noun, depending how it's used in the sentence. For an adjective form of transient, you would be describing something that is not lasting long where it's just a short period of time, something that only lasted for a short period of time. Some of you guys probably feel like summertime feels very transient because it passes by pretty quickly before you have to start school again. Or uh, we have winter break coming up, so that often feels very transient because it just passes by very quickly. So an example sentence for the adjective form of transient is Rick lived a transient lifestyle and preferred to move from campsite to campsite across the country. So that's how we use the word as an adjective, but you can also use transient as a noun. So when we use transient as a noun, it is going to be uh, someone who stays somewhere for only a short time before moving on. So a good example sentence for a noun where it is a person who is a transient, you would say the transient was only in Philadelphia for a short period of time before visiting other American cities. So that's all you have for your Unit 5 vocabulary, guys. Good luck and come and see me in charge time if you would like to clear up anything with your words.